This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Airfix's Sabres, Tacom's Japanese Super Heavy Tank, Maoshin and VK168.01P German Heavy Tanks, Italeri's F35B and Mercedes Benz 190E, AMT's TIE Fighter, MPC's Monkey Mobile, ICM's Airfield Truck, and Squid Games Figure. New Product Rundown, brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs, and by Cult TV Man's Hobby Shop, the place to go for science fiction and fantasy kits, details, masks, decals, and more. Welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly look at the latest releases. I'm Kendra Bell. I'm Aaron Skinner. Let's roll straight into this packed show with a look at Airfix's 148 scale Sabres. We have both the Canadair Sabre F4 and the F86F40. These kits share parts. We'll start with the Canadair version, the initial release, and then look at the differences in the F86F40. Starting with the fuselage halves, surface detail is recessed panel lines and rivets. The cockpit tub has molded consoles and gets a North American ejection seat, control stick, and instrument panel. A pilot is provided. The cockpit sits atop the intake tunnel that ends with intake fairing and engine front. The nose intake is a single part. Aft is a jet pipe that gets the rear of the engine. Optional FOD covers are supplied for both ends. The six 50 caliber machine guns and their ammunition feeds fit into bays alongside the cockpit. Airfix even points out removing the corners of the wing leading edges if you pose the ammunition tray doors open. Optional parts allow the speed brakes to be posed open or closed. There are similar parts to pose the gear bays closed, but the detail in the bays and on the landing gear will make posing them open an easy choice. Large tabs on the horizontal stabilizers should align them just right. The rudder is separate, but the elevators are molded with the wingtips. The kit represents a later production F4 with the 6-3 hard wing with upper halves from the leading edge to the flap and aileron hinge lines and inserts for the leading edge of lower wings. Also included are vented panels for the fuselage and drop tanks. Clear parts supply the windshield and canopy, gun sight, ADF antenna fairing, and the chin landing taxi lights that can be posed, deployed, or stowed. Cartograph decals and color diagrams show two marking options for RAF Sabres in Germany in 1954, one from number three squadron, the other from number four squadron. The major difference for the F86 F40 kit is the wing with new upper halves that allow room for the leading edge slats. Lower wing inserts allow the slats to be posed up or down. Extended tips with the ailerons finish the wings. Also different, the instrument panel, the insert forward of the vertical tail, and fuselage panels without vents. There are optional ejection seats. Decals and color diagrams supply stencils and markings for two F86s, one from the Norwegian Air Force's Flying Jokers aerobatic team, and the other from the first air wing of the Japanese Air Self-Defense Force in 1975. Airfix has been praised for its 172nd scale Sabres, and I'd say these kits will be equally well received. Next, from Takam, here's a 135th scale kit of their gargantuan OI Japanese tank made popular by the online game World of Tanks. After the Battle of Kalkin Gaul, the Japanese Army proposed a heavy tank as essentially a mobile pillbox. The project was disbanded in late World War II as resources ran low to produce even a prototype, and the plans were kept secret for more than 75 years. The hull of this beast is nearly 12 inches long in 135th scale and features welded plate detail underneath. Each side gets eight road wheels mounted on bogies, as well as drive sprockets, idlers, and return rollers. Individual link tracks with separate cleats and guide horns finish the running gear. The rest of the hull includes outer armored plates, glasses in rear, and a large upper plate with vents, hatches, rivets, and more. The main turret has a top, sides and a rear, and a multi-part mantlet for optional guns supplied in plastic halves or turned aluminum barrels. The smaller front turrets have similar architecture with optional slide molded plastic or metal barrels. The slightly different rear turret is armed with twin machine guns. The decal sheet gives markings for four what-if Japanese tanks 
in a variety of camouflage patterns. The realm of Piper Panzers isn't just for German vehicles. This will build into an impressive replica. Tacom has a couple of 135th scale German World War II super heavy tanks that fit the Piper Panzer definition. Both were blueprint developmental steps along the way to the mouse, which actually made it to the prototype stage. Both are also available to play in World of Tanks. These kits share parts. We'll start with the VK168.01P, the hull of which builds from a belly panel, sides, an upper hull with weld seams, wiring, and open engine grills. Running gear includes double pairs of road wheels, on bogies, drive sprockets, and idlers. They fit on the hull and sides, with paired tracks on either side that join with metal pins. The massive turret mostly comes in two parts, with a separate rear plate, as well as posable hatches and the commander's cupola. The main gun fits into the mantlet. Other features include a machine gun for the cupola, tools, and tow cables. Photo etch metal supplies internal screens for the engine grills. Decals and color diagrams show four marking options in a variety of interesting camouflage. Much of the Type 205 Motion kit is the same, including the belly, running gear, and turret. Different are the sides and the upper hull reflecting the turret being relocated to the rear of the hull, as well as the main gun and hull hatches. Photo etched metal is used for engine screens and the decals provide marking for four what-if tanks. Despite the size, these are relatively simple kits that provide plenty of scope for painting and detailing. They should be perfect for fans of German armor or World of Tanks. In the last episode, we took a look at Trumpeter's 132nd scale F-35C, so it seems fitting to turn our attention to Italeri's all-new 148th scale F-35B. This is the SVTOL version of the Lightning II, used on small carriers like the Marine Corps AHDs and the Royal Navy's Queen Elizabeth-class ships. Typical of F-35 kits, the fuselage splits horizontally. The upper fuselage shows the ram panels outlined slightly raised and with a different texture. There are also openings for the VTOL intakes. The underside has openings for the weapon and gear bays. The wings are separate and the leading and trailing edge flaps are posable. It may be possible to reposition the stabilators with a little surgery. The rudders are molded with the vertical tails. Cockpit detail includes a tub with molded panels on the consoles, a multi-part Martin Baker US-16E ejection seat, and instrument panel. The folding boarding ladder can be deployed. The heart of any F-35B kit is the VTOL equipment, and Italeri starts with engine halves, fitted with front and rear fans, and mounted into a bulkhead. Optional parts for the rear allow the nozzle to be either straight or down for vertical flight with the doors built to be mounted that way. At the other end, full intakes lead to the engine, and a drive shaft extends through it to the housing for the forward lift system, featuring upper and lower fans, as well as stator blades and louvers. The doors for the system, including the auxiliary intake, can be posed open or closed. Even the stabilization vents under the wing roots can be shown open. The wheel wells and weapon bays have molded structural details. The latter get plumbing and bomb racks. The landing gear legs are sharply molded and the tires are weighted. Ordnance options include a pair of GBU 31 JDAMs and a pair of AIM 120C AMRAMs for the internal bays. Pylons can be hung under the wings for so-called beast mode to arm the aircraft with two more GBU 31s or up to four GBU 12s and a pair of AIM 9X sidewinders. A centerline GAU 22A gun pod can also be fitted. There are even parts to make a weapons cart to pose bombs about to be loaded. A small photo etch metal fret supplies a seat harness and a couple of other cockpit details. The canopy and the fairing for the electro-optical targeting system are supplied in gold-tinted clear plastic. Other clear parts are wingtip lights and the internal parts for the EOTS. Cartograph decals provide airframe and weapon stencils, as well as markings for five aircraft. Two Royal Air Force F-35Bs, one from number 207 Operational Conversion Unit in 2019, the other from number 617 Squadron. Two U.S. Marine fighters, one in high-vis markings from VMFAT 501 in 2018, 
the other from VMFA 225 at Yuma in 2021, and one Italian Navy Lightning II in 2019. Look, I know we've seen a lot of F-35s, but this is only the second time that this particular version's been done in 148 scale. It looks great in the box, and the cartograph decals are particularly sharp. Italeri continues to get mileage from the Eschi catalog, with the latest being this 124th scale Mercedes-Benz 190E. This represents the sporty version with a 2.3-liter 16-valve engine, and it appears this kit has not been released since the late 1980s. Molded in silver, the body is mostly a single piece, except for the front and rear clips and spoiler, and lower body cladding. While the hood doesn't open, this is not a curbside kit. It includes an engine and radiator up front. Underneath, there are springs and disc brakes, suspension, including axles for the independent rear, steering and exhaust, rubber tires with molded tread and sidewall details fit around the wheels. Inside, there are door panels, seats, steering wheel, center console, and a dashboard. A single clear part supplies most of the windows as well as head and tail lights. Decals provide instrument faces, badging, and license plates for six European countries to build a regular car. There are also markings for a pair of cars driven by Niki Lauda and Ayrton Senna at the 1984 Nürburgring Race of Champions. These Italeri repops of older Eschi kits offer a chance to model a one-of-a-kind subject. In 1997, AMT Ertl released a new tool TIE Fighter kit that had two of the Star Wars ships in the box. Now, AMT has released a boxing with a single fighter. The ball and wing arms are molded in halves and sandwich a cockpit with floor, seat and controls, sidewalls and rear bulkhead and front frame. Clear plastic is provided to fill the windscreen and top hatch. For this release, Round 2 updated the wings for better proportional accuracy. The detail on the solar panels is well molded. No stand is supplied. The painting instructions are on the bottom of the box and look easy to follow. This kit has not been released in 25 years, so it's great to see it back on the market. Hey, hey, it's the Monkey Mobile, a classic 125th scale kit from MPC. Designed for the 1960s TV show by Dean Jeffries, the custom car was built on a 1966 Pontiac GTO. Jeffries, at the time under contract to MPC, helped the company gain exclusive rights to make a kit of the car. They would go on to sell more than 7 million of them. The kit has been reissued a few times over the years, but this is the first time since the initial release in 1967 to have the band members pictured on the box. The kit is relatively simple with a long one-piece body, including the windshield and modified hood, for the blowing engine. Many of the engine parts, including the blower, are provided in chrome-plated parts. The underside has molded structural and front suspension details. In keeping with the original, the rear axle molded with the drive shaft attaches to the frame without suspension. Exhausts finish the underside. Pat printed vinyl tires featuring blue lines, very sharp, fitted to chrome mag wheels ground the big car. Metal axles are used. Up top is the wide open interior with four bucket seats, dash and center console, all covered by the extended soft top. Chrome inserts give the grills and headlights. Clear plastic fills the windshield and taillights and the windshield extensions. Decals supply two different styles of the Monkees logo for doors, dials, badging, and some MPC labels. The kit doesn't give any placement instructions, so you'll need to find some references or watch episodes of the TV show. This is a great blast of nostalgia that is just fun to look at and build. If you're looking for a truck to sit next to a Soviet aircraft on an airfield diorama, ICM's 172nd scale APA 50M might just be the thing. Built on the ZIL-131 truck, this mobile electric unit supplied power to parked aircraft and helped start engines and maintain onboard systems. Parts of this kit date back to ICM's initial ZIL-131 in the 1990s, so there's a little flash, but detail on things like the cab are sharply rendered. Much of the interior is a single part with the floor, seat, and firewall, to which is added the dash and controls. The frame is a single part, to which is added leaf springs and axles. The wheels and tires are all plastic and molded in halves with separate hubs. This curbside kit has the lower part of the engine that connects to the transfer case and differentials with separate drive shafts. The surface section of the truck 
comprises the bottom, sides, and multiple parts to capture the shapes on top. The clear parts for the windshield and cab windows are designed to go in from the outside, which should make painting easier. The small decal sheet supplies dash instruments and markings for three Soviet trucks, two in military service, the third in civilian yellow. It isn't a big model, but it would offer a great sense of scale to see just how big a MiG-25 is. For our final kit, here's something a little different from ICM, a 1 16th scale kit of the worker guards from the popular Korean Netflix series, Squid Game. This is the first in a series of kits ICM is doing from the show. The torso comes in halves with the zipper, wrinkles, and belt all nicely sculpted. The legs are solid and get a couple of pouches. The arms are also solid with separate hands. There's a detailed head that will be obscured by the hoodie and a black mask. A neat pedestal stand is provided to display the character, and there's a decal for the white circle on the faceplate. There aren't a lot of parts here, so the trick and the treat will be in the painting. Look for reviews of it along with the Sabre, IO, Mercedes-Benz, F-35B, TIE Fighter, and more at finescale.com. We also have how-to videos, stories, and PDFs, and more. And the Comeback Hobby Store is a great place to look for tools, books, and gifts. Stop by today. Thanks for watching. I'm Kendra Bell. I'm Aaron Skinner. Happy, Happy Halloween! Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> He's armed with tween. Tween. <laughs> there's, a, there's like a 12 millimeter gun. Does that count as a tween? I'm going to slip into a different accent here. It's slightly different rear turret. He's armed with tween <laughs> machine guns. And this will build into an impressive replica. Bad puns. Um. <laughs> Bad puns sounds like a redundancy, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And being a proponent of puns, just stay stock still. Don't move at yeah. all. Yeah, like like a Chucky doll or yeah. whatever. <laughs> I can't hold this smile much longer. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it's great to see it back on the market. Not that you ever saw it the first time around. <laughs> hey, hey, we're the monkeys. And people say we're monkey around. <laughs> but we're too busy singing. We're too busy shooting here. Man, no wonder we don't have any fun. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we're doing the leg over thing that they used to do. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Kendra Bell. I'm Aaron. Happy <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> I'm sorry.